Some of the kindest and most tight-knit communities can be found in the lobbies of dead games. No, <laughs> you're <laughs> <laughs> and today we're exploring seven games that all have two things in common. Low player counts, and they're all free. I have a gun and I won't hesitate to shoot, you better stop knocking now. How many bullets do you have, Creeper? That's not He has no, he has no bullets. That's not important. He has none whatsoever. America's Army is an entire series of games developed by Sega Studios, Ubisoft, and the US Army, with the goal of making it a recruitment tool. America's Army Proving Grounds was the most recent release, and probably the last considering the US Army announced a couple years ago that all support has officially stopped. The game has seen multiple iterations since its initial release in the US in 2002, and it's all developed using the Unreal Engine. But the news says that on the 5th of May, the latest version, America's Army Proving Grounds, will shut down. From what I could see, America's Army 2 was the most popular version. There are tons of videos all over YouTube of people going through literal exams inside this game, purely for the fun of it. Are you ready for a break yet? As soon as I finish this report. They're waiting for you in the room down the hall. Aren't you supposed to be in class? Considering it was the entire reasoning for its existence, I have no idea how good this game was at actually recruiting people. But I did find a lot of people all over Reddit saying the reason they eventually joined the army was because of this video game. When I wanted to try it out myself, I had a few options, but ended up settling on America's Army Proving Grounds, which usually has a couple lobbies filled up. Hey fellas. Alright. No response, no problem. My first ever game was, uh, interesting. And I spent most of it just listening to the fellas argue over voice chat. No, no. Wait, okay, I got a kill because I wasn't sure if it was a teammate or not. We did lose this first game, and in the map vote, we chose a map called Homestead, which OVO loved. Aw, oh, shitty man. I really didn't do much in the second game either, and around halfway through, I got my first look at a big part of this community. Hey, Roy. Stop. Stop. Yeah. He's coming behind you now. He's out. Oh, no. oh ciao, ragazzi. Ciao, Slim. Ti stavo cercando. E se ti sei down. Oh, favone. Oh, immigrati! Oh, shut the fuck up What is going on? Is this like a clan? One, one, two. According to some people I spoke to before playing, clans are one of the biggest parts of modern day proving grounds. He also said that clans indirectly could have been the reason the game slowly fell off in the first place, as they started placing ping limits on their servers a few years back. Nowadays, it's mostly three clans and then their members that play the game, and I'm assuming these guys that I bumped into were a part of one of those three clans. I got just one kill on that server in a time span of about 30 minutes, and that was enough for me to switch to a different server. Are you f I took up the role of an insufferable medic, and I honestly think I did a pretty good job. Okay, this time I'm not getting a grenade to my face. I'm gonna get my, my boy over here. See, I'm just the medic. I'll let everyone else do the dirty work. I'll stay alive and help us out. <gasps> move, move. What the f That was- uh, I did also get some kills though, and I finished it off after we won twice in a row. Oh no, there's a guy over there. I'm not gonna get to him. Are you- I suck. Who made that animation? Nice boys, nice. I'm good, yeah. Oh, look at me go, man, look at me go. It's pretty rare that a free game like this actually feels like a paid game. But it's even more rare that a good free game like this isn't littered with pay-to-win garbage. And that's what makes this game f 
beautiful. I think they brought kind of that level of seriousness to gaming that wasn't really there before. You know, you had an Earl tournament and a Counter Strike were kind of the big games of the day that were more, and just getting out there and trying to get a, a bunch of kills where, you know, America's Army made it more about the kind of the teamwork and, and completing the mission than, than just being at the top of the scoreboard. Proving Grounds definitely isn't as popular as it once was, and that goes for the entire America's Army game series. The whole recruitment thing is long over. The game isn't officially supported anymore and hasn't been for a couple years now, and the player numbers are slowly dwindling. But I doubt that'll sway the countless people that still love this game. I've covered Cursed FOAD before, but I never really got to meet its community, and since my last visit they've had some updates, so I figured I'd revisit it in hopes of making some friends. Which is exactly what happened. If you don't recognize Curse, then you might recognize the name Cuisine Royale. I feel like they purposely made this game a troll. Like with all like the bullshit animations, with all the bullshit things around you, because they want to make it serious, okay? So they release it as a troll and they're like, ha ha ha, this game's so bad, ha 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 ha. And then eventually they tweak it and they're like, holy this game's actually pretty sick, you know? <laughs> Five years ago, Cuisine Royale was the new fella on the block in terms of Battle Royale, but it was different. And by different, I mean, it didn't exactly take itself too seriously. The game used to average thousands of players, but now that its golden days are long gone, it's hard to find a lobby of more than 20 people. The first game may have literally just been a 4v4, but it was in this game I met a legend called David. Hey, what's up? Oh, David. What's up, man? It's the first time I've ever heard someone else speak on this game. Nah, man, they just don't know how to talk. Hey, how comes there's only four other people in this lobby? What happened? I don't know, man. I don't play that much. Now, I used to play a lot. Oh, how come you stopped? Yeah. Uh, I play other games. Did you used to play it when it was called uh, Cuisine Royale or something? Hell yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm OG, bro. Cuisine Royale. People are like, what the fuck is a Cuisine Royale? I'm like, oh. Exactly. <laughs> Turns out he actually played the game back when it was known as Cuisine Royale, and he's one of the few from that time that still plays. Uh, sometimes you get like uh, 20, sometimes you get 6, sometimes you get 13. It's random. That's weird, there is still like 200 people on the game. I thought the lobbies would be a bit more full. Yeah, man, uh, it depends on the lobby. A lot of these people are going to be uh, speaking foreign languages, you know, speak American. You know. Oh, shit. Oh, sh- He's in between us. Oh. Good try, bro. He's good. We got run over, man. I didn't even see him. They were behind me. After the game, David added me as a friend, and I did invite him, but David's a busy man, so I re by myself in hopes of finding someone else. Instead of the snow map, we were now at the desert area, and my duo ended up being a fella named 420 underscore Dudka. Hello. Hello, my friend. Daro, yes. Daro. Daros, daros. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, Privet? Ah, привет. <laughs> For you, my friend. I For am you. bad game. I am bad game. No, we are bad game. Only game. Yes. You from Russia? Yeah. Ruski? Nice, nice. Yeah. I'm British. United Kingdom. You kingdom? Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Dudka was from Russia, and even though he said he isn't, he was a lot better than me. I'm so slow. Oh, <laughs> <Did> you port? <laughs> yeah, you good at this game? No. No. Bad. Okay. Very bad. Me also. I'm very bad. I'm new. <laughs> no game statistic. Uh, yeah, game relax. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ran across the whole map chasing gunshots, and then my player proximity sensor started making noise. Can I make this jump? Oh. Oh my god, I'm so- oh! Help! What is he doing? 
Nice. Yeah. Kill, kill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. nice. I feel like there's one more somewhere. There has to be, right? Тут сапоги у него. Давай, давай. Pitbull. Pitbull тут. Oh, coming, coming. Oh no! Come, come! <laughs> nice, nice. One dead, one dead! How are we not dead? Nice! We somehow survived that whole event, and while I was shitting myself, Dudka took the time to let me know how good I looked. So where are these other two? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Is he laughing at my outfit? You like? You like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. What do you like? Thank you. Divide, you skin. Divide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's win. Let's win. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Dudka was honestly one of the nicest and funniest legends I've ran into in my time doing YouTube. And I don't think this man cared at any point whether we actually won the game or not. Which is a good thing. Because we definitely didn't. Watch out, watch out. Up. Mountain, mountain. No, no. <laughs> Oh, fuck. What, what the f is that? Oh. oh my. What just happened? GG, <laughs> 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 man. GG. You fool. <laughs> what a guy, man. <laughs> what a guy. Holy shit. The next day, I came back to try play with Dudker again and saw he sent me a friend request. Turns out he was actually online, but he must have been AFK because he never saw my invite. So if you're somehow watching this, Dudker, we gotta get a win sometime, brother. Thank you to today's sponsor, War Thunder. The most incredible combat game ever made, and it's free on both PC and console. War Thunder features over 2,500 different vehicles, from ships of over 10 different nations, armoured cars of the 1920s, and fighter jets. If you're into realism, I'd highly recommend checking out the graphics and sound design of War Thunder. And of course, the X-Ray Vision. The X-Ray View lets you see exactly how your vehicle was destroyed, and shows you literally precisely where each shell penetrated. And don't worry about having to have any special hardware, you can jump in straight away with just a mouse and keyboard and join over 70 million players worldwide in some of the wildest PvP battles available. You can sign up now using my link below and if you're a new player or returning after 6 months, you can also get yourself a massive bonus pack including multiple premium vehicles and an exclusive vehicle decorator. Nomad is a more primitive version of Rust, transformed into a simpler art style and has been around for almost a decade. In older Nomad videos, you can usually see how full the servers used to be between 2016 to 2018, where the player count started to tail off a little bit. And even though the game is still alive today, it definitely doesn't feel that way. I knew if we really wanted to experience Nomad in a more chaotic state, I'd need a little bit of help, so I called in my Discord. Every now and then we host events where everyone in my Discord joins a free game I'm playing so we can experience four lobbies again, as if we were back in its golden days. But the problem with that is when dead games become dead, they downgrade their servers, and when 60 people suddenly log on all at once, that ended up causing a few issues. Oh, it's an admin. What's that? Why is the admin f naked? Oh my god, we have 56 people online on the game. <laughs> Guys, I think we're lagging. For around an hour, the voice chat wasn't really functioning at all. And every 10 minutes or so, we'd all be kicked due to having a bit of ping. My family generation. I lost connection. But it slowly started calming down a little when we spread out throughout the server, and it didn't take long before the developer noticed a couple more people online than usual. 
Why would you there? You, you trying to shoot no, me? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I swear to God, I'm just trigger discipline. This poor person's house, man. We're just standing outside of it. Right, I want to have a question. Why did you create? Why did you start to do YouTube? Why did you start to do YouTube? What was the reason? I wasn't good at anything else. They offered to remove the ping kick so that we could freely run around with 20,000 ping, and that actually ended up making things a lot better, allowing us to actually walk to places. Holy I think this is it. Oh yeah, it is. You oh, there's got, two bases. On the top. This is insane. Oh, still good. At some point, someone found a player-made castle near the bottom of the map, and around 20 of us slowly congregated there. Help me, please. Coming, coming. I'm 5 HP. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Ooh. For the next 30 minutes, we just hung out here. Some of us explored the city, and a couple people even found cars and guns. Anyone have uh, right. ammo? What's up? Are you fuck? Quickly right. stop the Stab me, because I gotta get going. Happily. Cheapers Moses. Do it! Who has the gun? <laughs> Don't be afraid. I have ammo for my pistol. Okay, Don't you shoot us at me. But, but you have the gun, Creeper. I want the gun, Creeper. But if I told you the gun had no bullets. <laughs> Creeper's being harassed for his pistol. I got, I got bullets. Don't you dare shoot me. Earlier on, a couple of us built huts, but the problem with having 50 people running around is the organization. Especially considering 90% of us knew nothing about this game. Good yeah, good luck with that, brother. Good luck. Oh, no, I'm there. I'm there. You got that shit. Come on. Get out, get out, get out. Kill them. <laughs> Holy shit. I have a gun and I won't hesitate to shoot. You better stop knocking now. How many bullets do you have, Creeper? That's not, he that's has not no, important. He has no bullets. That's not important. <laughs> he has none whatsoever. Mean. You're bluffing. You, you think I am? Two, one, shoot. Hello. Hello. Oh, gee, there's more. Looks like you love <laughs> Near the end, after our numbers had dwindled a little, we all hung out on the rooftop of this poor fella's castle, watching the sunrise. Hey guys, why don't you watch the sunrise? It looks beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Good Let's job, go. fellas. Hey, creeper. Oh, I think it's it's uh, a little yeah, bit delayed. You save you. Oh my god. Hello. Here's some options for you. I, I give you the honors to take me out. Thank you. With the gun. Oink, you are the greatest. What is... Yeah, thank you. Just a small problem there. Yeah, I'll just take the FNG. Cool. Wait. No bullets. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Honestly, I want to give a big thanks to the developer of Nomad, Deserto, for dealing with us for that long. They were such a legend, and if you want to support them, you can check out their new game that they just released. I'll link it below in the description. I try to do these events every couple months, so if you want to be in the next one, all you have to do is either be in my Discord or follow my Twitter, and you'll see whenever I send out an announcement. Thank you for everyone who came out. That was cool. Have fun. Have fun with all the It's been a great time, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good, even though we made the service sure. shit. Oh, jeep, I knew it was you from the moment I saw you. What is happening? What is happening? It's a fight. This is a... Oh my okay. god. There are games all over Steam that make you question how far gaming has really progressed over the years. And one of these games is Infestation Survivor Stories. It has a reputation as one of the worst survival games on the planet, and now that it's free, I thought I'd revisit it. Where's the center of my screen? How am I gonna know where I'm shooting? Where am I shooting? Look at him, he's just holding the angle. There's no way that's a real player. Is it? Wait, yeah, I'm the only person. It wasn't easy to find lobbies with players, especially because most servers are filled with bots, but I did eventually find one guy all alone in a lobby by himself. I really doubt that fella knew the game was not going to start with just him, and considering no one else joined in the 20 minutes that I was there, I doubt it will ever start. 
Afterwards though, I remembered that the remaining player base for this game isn't English. And after a bit of searching, I found everyone hidden away in the Hong Kong servers. Okay, I think I found where everybody is. I think we're on the Hong Kong servers. Okay. Over 20 people, which I'm assuming was pretty much everyone online, all crammed into one Battle Royale server. Unlike last time I played, I was given a couple teammates. None of them had an extremely impressive level. At least, not in the 90s like some people in the lobby were at. But they were a lot better than me. Okay, well. So I followed them around like a lost child, and of course I eventually died. Ah! Oh no. Oh! You got two of them. That was good. Well, it wasn't. We're all dead, but that was... He almost killed him. The looting and inventory system honestly weren't that bad, but it's barely fast-paced enough for a Battle Royale game. And the gunplay is honestly pretty average as well. I get how some people could like this game, especially if you're a part of the small community that plays it. But when there are so many better options available nowadays, even for free, I couldn't say I'd ever play this off camera. The redeeming part about this game is the all-in-one feature where you have a survival game, a battle royale game, an arcade shooter, and also a competitive shooter all-in-one. That's at least a pretty unique approach, it's just a shame the rest of the game is absolute shite. You guys send us a lot of dead game suggestions over on Twitter, but over 20% of them include the name of a certain game released in 2015. Guys, ready to f*** up. Follow me. Roger that. In 2024, Dirty Bomb isn't as dead as the other games in today's video. At least, that's what I thought. Dirty Bomb definitely has a small community that keep returning and have done for years regardless of there being no updates for the last 65 months. But there are other reasons for the higher player counts that I'll get into a little bit later. I queued up an objective mode to get a feel of the game and at this point I didn't know you could just switch characters after death so for the entire game I just played with this shotgun which got me killed a lot. Oh my god, he tried knifing me, this little bitch. Oh! Afterwards, I switched to a game mode called Stopwatch, where you win by completing multiple objectives in a faster time. Almost getting knifed finally motivated me to figure out how to switch classes to an actual rifle, where I finally started getting kills and actually got to test out the gunplay. I'm gonna follow through here and get- Oh, wow! I have just team killed, I think. The movement and combat of Dirty Bomb after playing an hour of Infestation Survivor Stories is genuinely indescribable. I learned to jump off walls, how to bait teammates, and eventually also pick them up. There you go, fella. Uh, you're all good. Really? Come on, mate. Don't worry, I got you. This map wasn't bad at all, but I knew there was more to see, so I joined one of the community servers with over 20 people online on the map Trainyard. Trainyard ended up being one of the best maps I've ever played in my life. What the f*** is going on? While half the chat was shitting on the map the entire game and constantly asked to switch it, I was genuinely having the time of my life being pummeled by a 20,000 ton train over and over again. <laughs> oh my god. These last few games were a lot of fun. There were a few that we lost and a few that we won, and occasionally I'd get rushed by some invisible fella with a knife. But afterwards, I completely understood why people play this game and why they never truly leave. Oh, that's a teammate. Oh, Weezus, I'm so sorry, bro. I, I kind of went off near the end like, okay. The score clearly doesn't reflect my impact in the game. It's one of those games where countless people have clocked over a thousand hours and more, and the Reddit is full of people talking about the golden days and how they'd love to return, but they don't have the free time or they don't see the game the same way anymore. Oh, I killed two? Wait, I got team killed. Wait, what team am I on? He has 2,666 hours. 
A big issue with Dirty Bomb in 2024 is obviously the people who never stopped playing and are simply f insane at the game, so it's kind of lost its balance over the years. However, while researching Dirty Bomb, I found something that actually made sense of why the servers were actually more empty than what the Steam player charts indicated. Pretty similarly to a game like H1Z1, someone has artificially modified the Steam's player count by at least a few hundred players. Usually there's around 60 players or less online on Dirty Bomb, and it's been that way for a few years now. But within the last four months, that number has suddenly climbed to over 500. Some of this is probably organic growth because of the release of the finals, but a lot of it is likely bots. As I write this, Steam says there are over 480 players online, but the actual Dirty Bomb player stats website says there are only 17. If Dirty Bomb was a part of your childhood like it was to many, maybe it's time to pay it a visit again. Apart from a small number of people getting incredibly good at the game, Dirty Bomb itself has barely changed, and I found so many people all over Reddit that had no idea the servers were even still running. Finding out a game you used to play almost a decade ago is still alive, or a server that you used to main is still running 10 years later, is one of the best feelings there is. I'll leave links to some Dirty Bomb videos down below that explain the history of the game from the point of view of someone who actually experienced it, so you can see the pretty big impact this game had on a huge number of people. Like Infestation Survivor Stories, War Mode has a pretty bad reputation for a couple of reasons. In its over 9 year history, War Mode has been involved in numerous pay to win scandals, it's broke Steam TOS, and War Mode has also issued countless false bans. The lobby I joined included pretty much everyone in the entire game, and there was less than 10 of us. You could tell the map was very old, and like me, I'm pretty sure the other players were all reasonably new, apart from maybe Recruit265853, who had over 53 kills. If you ignore the broken English scattered all over the game, it honestly wasn't too much worse than your average Roblox FPS. It worked pretty similarly to CSGO where you'd buy items whenever you die, and it's usually first team to a certain amount of kills that wins the game. It's like Dust 2. It's, it's literally a Dust 2 remake. You come up mid, you go cat. No way he checks that corner. Oh my- The second map was a recreation of Dust 2 from Counter-Strike with the B-Site locked off. I started to get to grips with the game here, but it was in the last round where everyone with talent left, and there was just six of us, and I was finally able to get a good amount of kills. So how do you get a real name? Because there's- There is two people with real names. I don't just want to be known as Recruit270793. Brother, I'm your teammate. Stop shooting me. We got one AFK fella, and the other fella's just shooting me. Don't shoot me. Brother. The maps weren't too bad, but they were a little one-dimensional, and you really get sick of running back to the same place 30 times over. I ended that game with over 75 kills, two dysfunctional teammates, and a victory. There we go. But as soon as I stopped playing, I looked more into the history of War Mode, which was when I found a thread from over seven years ago on the Steam subreddit. The post read, The game War Mode on Steam is falsely banning people and charging $640 to be unbanned. The thread accused War Mode of banning them for no reason, and then showing them this pop-up where they had the option to spend $640 on being unbanned from the game. And they weren't the only person. I found two or three other people in threads from 2016 exclaiming that they too were false banned, and only one said they were later unbanned. A couple users in the reddit thread pointed out that war mode could have possibly been hacked. Another user looked through the game's code and found exactly where the code was to ban someone, and then was later banned himself. 
I have no idea if this feature was intended, and I have no idea if this feature even exists anymore. But in one thread, a dev responded saying, Reason is using cheats, while citing a discussion that doesn't exist anymore, indicating that they at least definitely weren't hacked. I doubt anyone paid this fee, but it's just one of the hundreds of reasons why War Mode never really made it, and why it's fallen into the huge pile of dead games. Remember, if you're on PC or console, you can play War Thunder for free today and get yourself a massive bonus pack including multiple premium vehicles and an exclusive vehicle decorator using my link below. Thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. All of these games were recommended by you guys, and if you have a game you think would fit this series, send it to my Twitter that'll be linked below. And Dudka, if you're watching this mate, please message me so we can get that win again. Subscribe.